So we're going to take a look today at Cloudberry Backup. Now I really like the concept Cloudberry has here. They provide the software, you provide the backend for storage. And they offer a lot of backends, and we're going to get into some of that detail. You can back up to multiple cloud services all at once, multiple local services that you can control, and a suite of other options in here. So Cloudberry is really interesting at that. And with companies like Code42 who close their crash plan consumer program, it's kind of interesting to think that, okay, maybe there's other methods out there because their uh, program was tied to their back end. The nice thing about Cloudberry is it's tied to whichever back end you choose. And we'll cover how that all works and we'll show you the software. So they have their desktop backup for Windows, which is right now as of November 2017, that's what the price is now. Uh, you get a 15 day free trial and it's $29.99. Now, it's pretty basic for the Windows. You get all the options of encryption, as long as you're using the paid version. They have a free version that's minus the encryption. We'll talk about that, too. Uh, backup scheduling, block level backup, command line interface. So really great stuff for basically backing up all your files to wherever you want to back up all your files to. We're going to cover today because it really is the same product, but the Windows Server version. Now, the Windows Server version runs on a desktop as well, but also has support for full image backup, as in bare metal, you can back up the entirety of the system and make a new image of it. So that's a pretty cool feature that this has. It's not just a backup, it is a full system backup. And now this version's more money, it's, it's 120. Now what's kind of neat is if you want to switch versions, the software is the same. You actually, I eventually, I had loaded the uh, Windows version and then I wanted to switch up and I realized it didn't make me re-download. It does like an in place, oh, we'll just switch the version. So the software really works the same. It's just a matter of whether or not you paid to unlock those features. So I think that's kind of a neat way to do it so I don't have to re-download, uninstall, reinstall. And the interface is the same for both. You just don't have the features in the more basic version. So we're gonna do this version here. And if you don't need any of that bare metal recovery options, you can just go with the $29 version. But I figured if I'm going to cover the software, I may as well cover all the features it has in terms of that. And I can't know, I don't know if I can make a video long enough to cover every single feature. This is a very extensive one, but I'll show you how to get started with it and how to get things set up. Now, one of the cool things about this is the restore feature on the Windows Server version is you can restore to a VM. So you don't have to restore it back to another machine. If you're doing full system backup, you can actually restore to an Amazon instance, an Azure instance, or just export it as a VDI file. VirtualBox is supported. So there's there's a lot of options of when you make an image of a machine to restore it. Now, we've actually tested this. We have some clients that are really paranoid and nothing is allowed to go in the cloud and they have multiple locations. So Cloudberry is a solution we deployed for that client to have images at each of their locations of the other servers so they have their own backup system. They, they don't care how encrypted it is. It's not allowed to leave their building which makes sense. Maybe it's a solution um, that you want. And we kind of do the same thing here. We have a secondary uh, place where we store all of our data encrypted and you know, I don't have to save it in the cloud that way, but that's a different topic. But it's kind of a cool option. So if you have that as a thing going, I don't know if I want to just throw my data, even if it is encrypted into one of these other cloud providers, uh, you have the option at that point to say, okay, I want to store it in one of my own servers and I'll show you how to connect to those servers. So let's get into the software. So here's the welcome screen you're greeted with when you see the, when you first log in. Now I've already done some customization and I'll run through how that works. And what this is telling you is the backup plans that are set up, the storage accounts that are set up down here. Now adding a storage account, and we'll start with that because that's one of the first things that you may want to do is figure out where you're going to land all your data. There's a lot of options. So they group some of the popular ones on there, Amazon S3, Glacier, Azure, uh, D duplication server, just a basic file system backup, as in point to your own. OpenStack, Google Cloud, Rackspace. This is actually kind of neat, because if you say, I want to send it over to Amazon S3 or uh, long-term storage in the Amazon Glacier service, you simply go in here and set it all up. Another cool feature is you have the cost estimates in there. So if you know the price per gigabyte, it can help you then calculate the cost of storing in that server. So you just enable the estimate cost, you put the price per gigabyte, and you can even say, if the backup costs more than a specific threshold, you can say stop. I thought that was cool. And here's what's even neat about that too. Even on things like your own file system, 
or not own file, I'm sorry, not the own file system, but the uh, SSH has it. There you go, SFTP. If you are setting up SFTP to your own server, you know, I'll do the one that's already set up, close this. So if you go in here in my Linux F SFTP that I set up, let me edit, cost estimate, you can set your own cost estimate for your own storage destination that you created. So if there is a cost associated with it, maybe a storage fee because you have it hosted in some virtual spot somewhere, you can still set that on there. So I thought that was kind of novel. Uh, won't focus too much more on that. Uh, here is my FreeNAS, which is a standard uh, Windows share, Linux FTP, uh, which is kind of neat. So when you're doing the Linux FTP, and go edit. Um, I have a username and password set up, but if you have a private key, which is the better way to do it, I just didn't feel like setting up for this demo, you can take, and it does keyed authentication. So you can key authenticate to your backup service, which pretty cool. That's, uh, I, I like that as a feature. Easy to change support, username, password. Uh, setting the path. You do seem to have to set the path. I tried leaving a blank and it fails because it tries to write things in a spot it doesn't have permission for. So uh, do set the path in there. I set it to home, Tom, Cloudberry, but you can create that. It also will, if I add another directory like this, it will uh, create that directory on the fly. So as long as it has permissions to write there, it can do that. So that's kind of cool. Uh, it will do consistency checks. So you can actually do a consistency check on making sure that the data is consistent, that there isn't something that happened on the other end of the backup. Now this applies to everything. You can do a consistency check. I have it set up to go to a Google Drive account. I have it set up to SVP and FreeNAS. And I went ahead and ran the consistency checks and you can see that here and here and here. And it lets you know it's consistent. You can even schedule regular consistency checks. Now, this is what's kind of cool about Cloudberry is I have three different storage accounts. There's plenty of room to add more. And if you want your backups to be in many places at once because you may not trust one of the providers or you just want to make sure there's redundant copies because you may not trust one particular cloud service, you can do that. You can have a local copy, remote copy, or even multiple copies. Also, side note here, if you want to move to a different cloud provider, there's an option to set up a cloud to cloud backup. So you can say, I had it on S3 and I wanna move it to Azure, or I have it on Google Drive and I wanna move it to a local uh, or another Google Drive account even. You get to set these up and choose where you want it to go and then migrate them. It actually has that as an option. Matter of fact, it has an option for cloud to cloud, even just as a regular scheduled backup. So that's pretty novel there. Now, the other thing too, I called this Google Drive account. That's what I named it. You can have multiple Google Drive accounts going to different places. That's in case anyone asked, that is an option. You can have multiple of the same provider with different credentials. So if you have more than one Amazon account, you want the data to go somewhere else, or you have one backup plan that lands it in one and another backup plan lands in another, that's an option with Cloudberry. So this is a very, very diverse program. So let's look at the backup plans that I have set up. So this is the entire system image backup. Now, any backup you do, you, you start with either a file backup over here or an image-based backup, and it's running you through the wizard. Now, I'm not gonna run through the wizard here again because if you click edit on them, it runs you through the wizard exactly the thing, but all the checkboxes are filled in. So when you run through the wizard, next, what do we wanna call it? And we said land it here on the FreeNAS. Now, all the different storage ones come up, but if you go, oh, I need to add another one, you can add one on the fly right from here. So we want this, because it's image-based backup and I want it, it, I have this is big enough to hold it, uh, we just next. I called it full system image backup. Call it what you want. You can rename it at this point. Backup partitions. Now this is in case you have maybe a data drive you want to skip. By default, I just have it. I have it selecting all of them. You can also say only system required partitions uh, for boot. So some options there. Now test and credentials uh, because this is a, a window share. There's a credentials test option here that I can do which it works, it does the test to make sure it can do it. Block level backup, yep. Enable compression, enable encryption. This is important. Now this is what gives you compliance with a lot of different things like HIPAA or some of the other agencies that require that your backups be encrypted. Now you should be encrypting all data at rest because anytime you have data sitting somewhere, especially an image of your entire hard drive, if it's not encrypted, someone could grab that. Someone, if they were to get into your files or take your backup USB drive that you copy this to and it was not encrypted, they would be able to then decrypt it. Uh, so this has AES uh, 256 if you want to go all the way. Defaults just to 128. And 
this allows you to create a password and pre-encrypt the drive prior to sending it. So it's encrypted at this level before it lands over there. So it's not landing over there encrypting, it's encrypted before it sends. Therefore, no one's really likely to get the data in flight. And then when it lands on the server, if someone were to break in a server, they would just have an encrypted blob that's as good as the password you have. So choose a good password and don't forget it because there's not a recovery option for this. When you encrypt your data with this, there's not a oops. There is a, I lost the password. And they're like, well, there went your data. It's gone. <laughs> so uh, make sure if you choose encry encryption, great idea to do that. Retention policy. Specify number of days to retain backup plan, delete older versions than this, or to use default. And there's an option so you can just set a global default for how many days and revisions you keep of the image. Well, that's pretty cool too. So you may want multiple revisions of it. Let's say you keep seven days worth. So it will do seven revisions. It provided you're running this daily, and that way you can jump back when you do a restore, not just to that one, but choose a, choose one of the other revisions of the files. So this works globally for the files and for full image backups. Uh, you can specify just to run a specific date, recurring, stop a plan takes too long to do, uh, recurring, daily, weekly, yearly. Uh, you have all these different storage plans. And all this is kind of neat too, because if you maybe wanted to set up a storage plan for like the Amazon Glacier long-term storage, and I'm considering what to do with all my videos because they're big and I don't know what to do with them. I'm thinking Glacier might be a fun way to, or a cheap way to put all the data somewhere and land it. And, uh, but that's, you know, an easy way to do it. You can set this yearly plan and say, go ahead and do this and yeah, pretty cool. So then we're next, and uh, we're not running this one on schedule. Uh, it wants to know when I want to do that. Strongly recommended that you run a regular full backups because if you're doing incrementals, and we're just going to skip that for now. This is another feature, especially in the server side, that you may really like. So pre backup, post backup, uh, backup chain. These are allow you to chain the backups together and say, do this, this, and this in this order. Uh, post backup. These are scripts you can set up to run right after the backup. So maybe you want to uh, shut down a database or uh, change a function pre-backup and then post-backup, start that database back up. These are options you have in here. Uh, this is a pretty cool feature, I think, because you know you don't just want the backup to run because then you sometimes have to write a script that does something else before the backup runs because there's something that has to occur. You can just put these scripts right in here and it'll run them. Uh, I want to receive email notifications in all cases or just if a backup fails. I like this too because you can put the email address, the username in, you can use their SMTP server. So that's pretty handy. It comes from the Cloudberry Labs. Uh, you can specify your own and put your own if you have an internal server. Not everybody does. And this is kind of convenient. It seemed, I haven't seen any of these go to spam when I've received emails from when we set this up for clients or when I've done my testing. Uh, so that's novel. Uh, you can also say uh, add entries to Windows event logs. So if you're monitoring your event logs, it will put that information and data in there gives you a summary of all the options you set. Hit next and finish. Simple as that, it's just like the wizard, but because I chose some of these options already, it went ahead and did that. Now let's look at file-based backups and we'll do this here. And so this one goes to Linux FTP. I called it backup my documents, save plan configuration to the backup storage. Now, one of the things about that checkbox is the backup storage, when you reload Clibrary and you point it here, it understands how things were saved and kind of works in reverse. The backup storage plan is a reverse of the plan I set here. So it's going, okay, this is the storage plan. So if this computer crashes, I need to restore it when Cloudberry connects to the same credentials I put in, it understands what the settings were for this backup when it was run. So kind of ni nice that it saves that as part of the data. Now, in the file mode, we have a few different options. Advanced mode, encryption support multiple file versions, block level backup. Downside is, here's the plus and minus, you can't access the files with other client tools. So the backup it creates can only be accessed by Cloudberry. So you can't just go, I want to look through the files. And the reason why is because it's encrypting all of them and doing a, it's creating its own files. Then you have simple mode. You can access your backed up files with any, with any client tools, no encryption, no file versions, no block level backup. Now, what that does 
is just basically create copies of the files inside of folders. So if you look at the destination, you can just go through the folders and it'll mark them with dates and go this, you know, here's your document that was backed up on this day from here. So there's a good and bad. If that's the way you want things, and you're not worried about encryption uh, or block level backups, which means files at the incremental level, then you can do this. I choose the advanced mode. Uh, I want encryption almost any, I can't really think of many times I ever want to back up something to any destination that's not encrypted. Uh, that's my habit, especially the critical nature of the documents and things that we back up, data for customers. We pretty much always want the destination to be encrypted, even if it's secured, even if it's my own USB drive that's in my pocket. I generally want that to be secured in case it becomes not in my pocket. So I generally choose advanced mode, but you have the option of not doing that. Uh, it does use volume shadow copy service in Windows. And what that means is if a file is locked, volume, there's a volume shadow copy of that file. So you can get the copy of the file minus the active changes that are going on because they haven't been saved, but you can still back up files that are locked. It does have the option to back up NTFS permissions as well. Really handy if you're in a server environment. So if you have to restore something because someone oops something, which happens a lot, it'll restore the permissions related to that file on the restore because you chose to back up the NTFS permissions. Then to specify the files, which standard, you know, little pull down check boxes, uh, they're gray because I didn't select everything, but fully checked because I wanted to back up the entire documents directory. And if you want another one, just check it and away we go. Now this is also kind of neat. You can only you say just back up everything is the default, which is good. Uh, back up files of these types, so you can create different uh, scenarios. Do not back up files of these types, so you can invert that option. And it has little things here. It tells you like how to wildcard it and things like that. Uh, do back up the empty folders, but skip this folder. Uh, backup files modified so many days ago. So you can get fine grain in here or even say, do not back up files larger than whatever size. So I like this feature because this sometimes is a problem with certain files. You're like, I never want to back these files up that are in this directory and it lets you wildcard those ones out. I do like also that the default option, if you next and yes your way through this, is just back up everything, which is good because some backup programs I've seen uh, skip certain files based on certain things uh, and that can create a real headache for people when they thought they had a full backup. So enable compression, enable encryption, and you, know, you choose the encryption you wanna use. Uh, and this is kind of nice, encrypt the file names. By default, it doesn't, which I thought if you turn on encryption, that box doesn't just automatically get checked. thought that's kind of neat. You can see all the file names, but they end up with a different extension as part of the encryption. So you can't get anything out of the files, but you could derive information about what that data was. So you may want to, if you're going to encrypt, I'm probably going to recommend you encrypt file names too. I tested it with and without just to see what happened. And if you don't encrypt the file names, I said you can start deriving data going, oh, I know what these files are. They're called, you know, financials 2017. So you know the name, even though you would know the content, you would have some clue as to what this backup contained. Encrypting the file names means it's all gibberish and no one can grab anything out of it. Once again, here's our uh, option for retention and you know, you can click the options button and set global defaults for policy or specify for this particular backup plan, how many days you wanna keep the backups or how many revisions or delete files that have been deleted locally. This is actually another option. So if a file gets deleted, you may want to keep several versions of it on there going, I don't know if they wanted to delete it. I'm gonna remove it from the backup and give people a few days of keeping it in the backup before I actually purge it out. So once again, that fine grain control is there. Uh, we had this one set to recurring, hit edit schedule. We just said daily at 3 a.m. Schedule full backup, pre-backup, same options come up at the file system level as with the system image one of pre and post backup plans. Next, I want to be notified, same exact menu again, and away we go. And to run the backups, I kind of like the way too, if you have a bunch of backup plans, you can collapse this. Uh, to run the backups, you can simply just do this or even this right here. And it's the same thing. I'll just jump in here real quick. Uh, if you're backing up to a different storage location like Google Drive, it's the same thing. We just choose this and everything else is the same. And then we just click run, I'll click run on this one. It's seeing if there's anything different and checking the files real quick and uploading it. Actually. 
I think there's no changes I made to this. So yeah, it's just real basic here. And then now it's stored in a copy stored in Google Drive. Now, when you're setting up the Google Drive, you actually get to specify the folder uh, that it goes into. So you see what the backup name is, but inside of the here where you're configuring it, you can specify whatever subfolders you want to be where it lands. So you can move it to different places. So if you were backing up to multiple Google Drive accounts, you're okay, I'm gonna call this one uh, my Windows 10 computer and this one my other Windows 10 computer, whatever the name is of each system when you're backing it up to your Google Drive. I also like how it gives you the use space. So uh, they knew this image started, this computer had 41 gigs backed up, but it only took 28.4 gigs for the image. And this one's uh, 54 versus 72 megs of backups. And this one here is just 57 megs. So kind of novel for that. Now let's talk about restoring. Now we can restore and we'll start with this one. Then we're going to create a restore plan for the other ones. So when you set up a restore plan, restore plan here, and we're going to head and run through the wizard to show you the options here. The same similar wizard comes up for a restore plan. So select the backup. This is the free NAS version next through this. Uh, save restore plan, run restore once. So you can say just run it once for we can we'll save this like we were. Now point in time, latest version, you can choose right here which version you want to store or just say when I run this restore plan, I want it to be their uh, latest version. Restore, and this is the restore options. This is what's pretty cool. Restore physical disk, restore virtual disk, and then choose your option. So we've got virtual box, uh, and not just the option. You want a virtual dynamic disk, a fixed disk, so you get the specifics, fixed or dynamic disk, just a raw one, uh, raw parse, raw as a uh, tar GZ image, so that's kind of novel too. Um, let's say we have an Amazon account set up. I don't have one set up here, but you can actually restore to an EC2 instance, restore to an Azure, uh, restore to a Google Cloud instance, or restore as a VMware virtual machine. It will go ahead and just create the VMware machine from this machine restore. So this is pretty neat, the way you have all these different options in here. And we'll say restore as a virtual disk, and we happen to have VirtualBox. So we'll do, whoop, choose dynamic if we want. Next. Which ones do you want to restore? We'll just say everything. Where do you want to put it? And I could say save this to desktop and it uh, sets the dis destination disk capacity and details next. Test the service. Yeah, we want to uh, decrypt. We put the password in because we know it's encrypted. So decrypt it too, because we had encryption set there. Now it's kind of weird. You can, maybe you want a machine this is where it gets kind of cool because they have a scheduler for the restore. Maybe you want to keep an image of this machine and keep imaging it back up to an EC2 instance or a VMware instance. That becomes a really neat feature because then you can take the software and say, uh, run the backup plan on this, and then later on, run the restore plan so there's a, uh, as they refer to, a warm copy in the cloud. And what that allows you to do is if this machine dies, you're like, oh, hit the warm copy over here because it was imaged this many hours ago. So you don't have to go through a restore process to restore it. You're actually keeping this. Uh, this has become a strategy that I've seen and talked to a few of my friends in uh, the corporate levels of IT that they're using is just keeping warm servers that they image and they're ready to go in case something goes wrong, which is kind of nice. So you're, you know, keeping a whole duplication of things on there. And you can do it even with your one individual server or Windows 10 box. And Cloudberry actually has this as an option, which I think is kind of cool. So you can schedule your restore processes. So this is really slick to how all this works. And your same menus, receive notifications for email, give me a summary. And uh, if I check the box, it'll run now. I don't really want to run that backup right now. So if we want to do a file-based restore, we just run the wizard here, click the restore wizard, and let's restore something from our Google Drive account. We're just going to run it once. Latest version, point in time, same things come up, or you can get, let's say, only show me files, modify between these dates, or just manually select things. We'll say uh, right here. And then we go through and choose all the restore and say, all right, let's go here. Restore original location, specify location. We'll say original. Uh, decrypt, if they were encrypted, you have to use the same password again. I want to restore uh, when restore fails. We'll check this box. Next, next. 
and restore plan created and it's actually running the restore right now. Done. It's really fast because I restored just a couple little image files. So really slick the way that works. Uh, the, and because I chose not to save this as a plan, this is a one-time restore action. You notice it created it, ran the tool. Once the tool was done, it deletes. Now you can also view the history of these and there's an option here, but this is like the history of running each of these backups. Here's all the logs. Uh, I set something wrong. Here's where I screwed up and permission denied, permission denied uh, when I was setting it up. So you have the whole history. Uh, you can say, okay, just the plan, just the consistency checks. So nice filtering makes it really easy. Uh, purge, post-action, pre-action, or just show me things where I screwed up and had failures. So real quickly, let you filter and get to things. Then you have uh, last week, last day, export this to a CSV, really neat. So you can say, all right, I just need a, a backup report of this. And you're able to run that. Now, this is also kind of neat too, because this lets you get some of these storage apps. And you can look through here, like Linux FTP, I can actually explore the data that's saved inside of there as connected. So here's those images and things like that. And I can restore, update cloud info, refresh, or delete. So it actually lets you go back and look at the things you stored in here. So this one has an image on it. It lets me see the disk image that I created here. So really, it, it, I love the way this system works. I'm really impressed with this software. And for 120 for the full version here, you get a lot of very powerful features on here. And the way you can explore the backup storage, the way the restore works, the way the backup plans work, and just kind of the easiness, easiness of the overall software is pretty slick. Now, the final question you're probably gonna ask, and the last thing I'm gonna cover here is, what does a bare metal recovery look like in here? Well, that's pretty neat too. I have that set up. So we ran all these backups. We've created a whole system image. And let's say this system completely has died and we want to do a bare metal restore, not just a VDI restore, not just an import on virtual machine. That's pretty straightforward, but we got to reload this hardware with the server software again. And how do I do that? Good news. Make bootable USB. If you didn't see it up here is right at the top. You can create a USB one or an ISO. Uh, because I'm gonna do this in a virtual machine, I'm doing it with an ISO. I didn't feel like pulling a machine out to do this, uh, but it works the same way whether whichever one you choose. I like that they have the ISO image because that makes it easy because it's not as easy doing bootable USB inside of virtual machines. So let's close this down and show you how the bare metal recovery looks like and that'll conclude this. So let's close this. Now I created this uh, Windows 10 virtual machine and called it Cloudberry Restore. So here's the console and CB is Cloudberry underscore bootable ISO. Now, when you create this ISO, and let's actually show you real quick here. When you're creating this, a couple things are on here. So we created an ISO image. We said where we want to put it. Um, master password is first the password we set, and I'm going to show you why in a second. So if you don't set a password, anyone could just run this that would be a problem. If anyone could just run it, they actually have the ability to restore because, and you're gonna see this is really slick how, how this works, they allow um, this backup that you create, the ISO itself is not an image of the system, but it does contain the Cloudberry software and the credentials to log into your cloud providers. And you also have a path to drivers. So if you have certain special network drivers uh, to get this working, you can actually load that and it'll spin them into the ISO or USB. So let's jump back over to the virtual machine. So here's the CV bootable. We're gonna start it up and show you how this works. So yes, it boots a Windows uh, 10 bootloader on the CD or on the USB, whichever you chose. So the first thing we're prevented is presented with is the master password to this. So let's put this in. Now it's thinking. Now you have some management tools here, um, like a registry editor, uh, save some logs, command prompts. So if there's something special you have to do, you have that option. But let's go right to bare metal recovery. Here's the Cloudberry tool loading. Now this is where I thought this was super slick. Here is the storage account that contains the image. It When it built the USB or ISO, it saved this and the credentials to log into it inside of here. 
This actually is nice because then when we want to do a restore, I can simply choose this as the option for the restore. So here's the restore wizard. Yep, that's where we're going to pull the data. Run restore once, sure. Latest version. So it still has the same options. I can choose the different versions. So if I go, no, I know this computer became messed up two days ago, but I have seven days worth. You can jump back to whichever version you have. So if you're keeping, you know, however many versions, seven, eight, 10 versions, you jump and choose the version on here. We're just gonna say the latest version. Restore a physical disk, restore a virtual disk. So even though it's running in here, you still have the option to restore it virtually, but we're gonna restore it physically because it thinks it's in a bare metal machine. What do you wanna restore? All of it. Yep. This is where we want to restore it to. So it's select the physical disk. Uh, I made the disk a slightly different size and it doesn't seem to care. It will not go smaller. So I know I did make an attempt at that. And as, is, as expected, if the disk is smaller than uh, what it had for the drive, it will fail. Uh, decrypt, there's the password we got to put in because we put a password to put the data on there or it'll fail if we don't do this. Um, it'll email notify you because as long as it has network access, it can notify you when it's done. And that's actually kind of nice as I can say in all cases, because maybe I don't got time to babysit this machine and it takes, especially if you're reloading something with a lot of data, it's going to take a long time. And next finish and away we go. It will start restoring this disc. And I, like I said, this is really, I'm impressed like how simple they made this entire process. Um, I didn't have to re-specify the storage source or anything else. It just says, okay, you have it here and let's copy it from here. And here's the settings. We're gonna pull the network and we're just gonna put it all back together for you. So it really makes it kind of pain-free to do the restore, provided you don't forget your encryption password. So make sure you document that at the beginning of it. Uh, when we set up the encryption for our client, you know, we make sure we have all that set up. So if ever this, server dies that we have these all set up on, we can restore it. But in my overall impression is really positive with Cloudberry's backup solution. Like this is intuitive. It's not overly complicated. It's easy to use full system backups, full file backups, and not that bad in price uh, and multiple storage providers or rolling your own storage provider from SFTP, uh, internal servers, just standard Windows shares that will go across, which is actually, uh, it is pulling this off of my free NAS box. Full encryption support, so all your data at rest is fully encrypted, including the file names, which is really nice. So there's no uh, skimming of metadata for people were to look at that. Even if they couldn't decrypt it, they, like I said, you can start to derive what the data is. So overall, really impressed, really happy with Cloudberry Labs backup software. It's a solution, like I said, we have a couple clients that we deployed this on, and we did not get anything free from Cloudberry to do this. Just I want to make sure that's clear. Um, all this, that's why this is a trial edition of the software. And uh, we bought it, we tried it, I like it, and really happy with it. I definitely put it on my recommended software list. If you're looking for um, a backup program that you you know can really trust to be encrypted and all that, they've been vetted, I believe, uh, Security Now, Steve Gibson did some vetting of the way they implemented the security and said that was good. I'm not an expert on it. I know in concept how they did it, um, but I believe they've done some code review or vetting and to make sure it's done right. And it really does, seem to be done very well. So once again, great product. Uh, put it on my recommended list. If you're interested in it, go download a free trial like I did. You get 15 days to play with it. And that's including the server edition. So if you like the content here, like and subscribe. If you uh, have some other experiences with Cloudberry or if I overlook something, let me know. Uh, at some point, they offer a whole nother version that's made for uh, IT companies to manage groups of these. And I may do a review of that edition later. Uh, because I wasn't going to, but then after I was so impressed with the way that this software worked, I you know, have an interest in that. And I know a few people that are using it told me they're really happy with it because it kind of keeps you in control because they let you choose all these different providers or you yourself can roll your, be the own storage provider, which is actually kind of a neat concept because storage is cheap if you want to store things in-house for your clients. So once again, if you like to content here, like and subscribe and uh, give Cloudsbury a thumbs up. Thanks.